For my thoughts on all the latest happenings in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format, be sure to check out my channel, JG9 News. And now, on with our feature presentation. What happens if, in the NFL, you don't get paid until you won a game? No win, no pay. I'm not talking about things like bonuses, which players get all the time for winning games and for hitting certain team-based incentives. I'm talking straight up as your base salary, that if your team didn't win the game, you got no money whatsoever. Almost like a lawyer that works on contingency or a real estate agent that doesn't get paid until the house is sold. You can probably think of a slew of things that would come from this as a result, aside from the NFLPA raising hell and throwing a fit over this, and understandably so. Free agents would be way more likely to sign with teams who are already good. Because what's the point in signing for a lot of money with a bad team if you don't get paid unless said team wins? A lot of players would be going broke, even more so than nowadays. Just imagine a player on the 2008 Detroit Lions or the 2017 Cleveland Browns, and how horrible of a financial situation that they would be in. Especially if it was their first season in the NFL, and they were an undrafted free agent. Players who get drafted by particular teams might be way more likely to hold out, knowing that they're losing money going to certain teams. We'd see way more players revolting over coaches if the coach made decisions that were actively costing the players in question their money. Way more players with families to feed would request trades to winning teams the moment things get rough. You get the idea. This is not a world that we would want to live in, and there's a reason why contracts in the NFL are not structured like this. That scenario where you don't get paid until you win is a lot to think about. But something you don't have to think about is hitting that like button and subscribing down below. We're trying to reach 60,000 subscribers and build the best football community on this platform where we talk all things NFL history all the time. So be sure to hit those buttons down below and thanks in advance for your support. However, I bring this up because this man that you've been watching this whole time, sure enough, he decided to do that. This is running back Bobby Anderson, as in, the brother of former Miami Dolphins safety and 1973 Defensive Player of the Year, Dick Anderson. And in 1971, he didn't get paid until his team won a game. As long as the Denver Broncos are not winning games, I'm not going to get paid. Seems absolutely crazy to think about, but that's the reality of the situation we're about to take a deep dive into today. And the results of said situation might surprise you. Because this is the story behind running back Bobby Anderson, the 1971 Denver Broncos, and the player who didn't get paid until his team actually won a game. Before I talk about the actual situation in question, who Anderson was, and how all of this played out for him, we need some context to understand the team that Anderson was on, the Denver Broncos. Being a Bronco fan back then was incredibly rough, as through the first 11 years of their franchise's existence, the team never had a winning record. In fact, of the original eight AFL teams, the Broncos were the only one who never made a single playoff appearance. And at this point in franchise history, the lifetime record of the Broncos was at abysmal 44-105-5, with the team winning just 30% of its games. I'm not sure how many people expected things to get much better in 1971 after a 5-8-1 season in each of the past two years, but optimistic Bronco fans were hoping that this could finally be the year, and this would finally be the year that, at least if they couldn't make the playoffs, they could at least have a winning record, or heck, have more than five wins for the first time since 1962. However, through the first four games of the season, it was not playing out that way at all. After tying the Miami Dolphins in the opening week of the season by a score of 10 to 10, the Broncos proceeded to drop their next three games and lose all three of those games by double digits. They lost 34 to 13 to the Green Bay Packers in a game that you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. The one saving grace for the Broncos entering 1971 as to why things would be better was because they got former first-round pick of the Green Bay Packers, quarterback Don Horn. But this game against his former team was a pretty good indication of how this season was going to go. 
as he threw a whopping six interceptions in the loss. Then, they had two division games, and they proceeded to lose both of them, losing 16-3 to the Kansas City Chiefs, and losing 27-16 to the Oakland Raiders. Through the first four weeks of the season, the Broncos were 0-3-1, and as the record implies, they had yet to record a single win. Keep in mind that in 1970, the Broncos started the season off 4-1, so dating back to last season, the Broncos had won just one of their last 13 games. This season was already shaping up to be a disaster for Denver. They were dead last in the AFC West after four weeks, and they trailed the first place Kansas City Chiefs at Oakland Raiders by two and a half games already. They were also two and a half games back of the low wildcard spot in the conference, so if they were going to make any sort of playoff push, I kid you not, in a 14-game season, they had no room for error. We were barely into October, and they could afford to lose maybe one more game before their season would be officially over. They had the second-worst offense in the conference through four games, having scored just 42 points, or barely over 10 points per game. They had the third-worst defense in the conference, having allowed 87 points, or just under 22 points per game. And they had a third-worst point differential in the conference, at minus 45. Everything that could go wrong for the Broncos to start the year off did. As for an already terrible franchise, this was somehow shaping up to be their worst season ever. And that's where this man right here comes into play. This is a running back by the name of Bobby Anderson. His brother, Dick, was playing on the opposite side of the ball out of Miami and was establishing himself as one of the greatest defenders in the league and was winning games seemingly every week under the guidance of Don Shula. Bobby, on the other hand, well, not so much. The Broncos drafted the Colorado running back in the first round of the 1970 NFL Draft, hoping to create a great one-two punch at the running back position with he and future Hall of Fame runner Floyd Little. And in Anderson's first season with Denver, while he wasn't crazy good by any means, he was definitely solid, averaging over four yards per carry, fighting the end zone four times, and having over 500 yards from scrimmage. And to start off the 1971 season, Anderson, while definitely a bit inconsistent, was playing fine. He wasn't the problem. He was very close in terms of yards per carry to what he was averaging in 1970, and he was on pace to end the 14-game season with 875 yards from scrimmage, which, as a baseline, would have comfortably placed him inside the top 30 players in the NFL in 1970, which is solid for a man who had a worse than 1-2 rushing attempt ratio than Floyd Little. But as you can understand, when you haven't gone to win through your first four games of the season, and when you've won just one of your last 13 dating back to last year, this man right here, Bobby Anderson, was not pleased at all. Not in the slightest bit. And with that, Following Denver's 27-16 loss to the Oakland Raiders in Week 4, a game where Anderson played his best football of the season thus far by averaging 7.5 yards per carry and picking up over 100 yards from scrimmage, Anderson announced that he was going on strike. Not a strike with the team, but a strike with his money. When he went into the facility to meet with the team's secretary, who would then hand over Anderson's paycheck, as she always did, Anderson decided to refuse the paycheck. Don't pay me anything until we win a game. Obviously, he had no idea how long that was going to be. Based on Denver's history, winning just once in their last 13 games, it could have been a while. But ownership didn't push back on this. Anytime you can save money, you're going to. He wasn't paid for that game against the Raiders despite that being his best outing of the season and he wasn't going to be paid for any game going forward until his team actually got rid of that goose egg in the wing column and broke their awful skid. And when I say that could have been a while for this man right here, I mean it. Their next opponent was the division rival San Diego Chargers. The Broncos played the Chargers twice in 1970, and both times, the Broncos did not leave the field victorious, losing one and tying one. After that, the Broncos had a date against the Cleveland Browns, a team that was 3-1 through their first four games and was looking like the favorite to win the AFC Central. A game against the 0-4 Philadelphia Eagles 
in a game that felt like someone had to win by default was after that. But if the Broncos couldn't win that, they had a game against the Detroit Lions, who made the playoffs in 1970 and were 3-1 through their first four games at the time that Anderson made this statement, followed by a game against the Cincinnati Bengals, who made the playoffs in 1970, and a game against the Kansas City Chiefs, who destroyed the Broncos in Week 3. Bottom line, Anderson was putting a crap ton on the line by playing on a contingency. He better be really good with his finances, because if he wasn't, this could be a long and painful season for him in more ways than one. Because on paper, minus the Eagles game, there were no quote-unquote winnable games for the Broncos until after Thanksgiving with the way they were playing to start the season off and the way they were playing over the last 12 months. But the next game after Anderson initially refused his pay was at home at Mile High Stadium against those San Diego Chargers. One of the only teams in the conference who had a worse defense and a worse point differential than the Broncos through the first four weeks. And sure enough, in this game right here, in what was great news for Anderson, the Broncos won. Denver actually never trailed the contest at any point, and they led it 20-6 at the half. Despite not scoring any points in the second half, the team was able to hold on and give their fans something to cheer about for the first time all season. As when all was said and done, the Broncos prevailed by a final score of 20 to 16. Was it the prettiest game in the world? Absolutely not. The Broncos committed seven penalties. The Broncos put the ball on the ground four times, and starting quarterback Don Horn went just seven for 17, completing 41% of his passes for 71 yards, no touchdowns, one interception, and a passer rating of 29.3, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. But they got the win, and the main reason why? Sure enough, it was this man right here, Bobby Anderson. He had 25 carries for 106 yards and a touchdown. Not only did he average over 4 yards per carry, but he went over 100 yards for the first time in his career. I remember how I said that Don Horton completed just 7 passes? Well, 3 of them went to Anderson, and he had 43 receiving yards so he had more than half of Denver's receiving yardage on the day. Denver finished the game with 296 total yards, and Anderson finished the game with 149 of those yards, having more than half of Denver's offensive contributions on the day. Safe to say, he earned his paycheck and then some. And what's crazy about the man who played for this team behind me right here is that Bobby Anderson was somewhat of a bust considering his draft status as a high first-round pick. He was out of the NFL by the end of the 1975 season. He only played four seasons in Denver. His last season with the Broncos was 1973. And he only finished his career with 1,200 rushing yards, at least during his time in Denver. In fact, as a Bronco, and in the NFL for that matter, he only had one game in his entire career, that was it, with over 100 yards rushing. And that game, sure enough, it was that game against the San Diego Chargers. As in, the game where he didn't get paid unless they won. Maybe based on that small sample size we have, if he just didn't get paid for any games unless they won, he could have been the greatest running back of all time. Maybe he should have played more games with having his pay withheld until they won the game. Move over Barry Sanders, Bobby Anderson could have been the GOAT. No, Bobby Anderson didn't do a whole lot in his NFL career. And no, the Broncos did not do a whole lot when Anderson was on the team, as that win against the Chargers did not turn their season around or provide a spark to do something greater, as the team still finished in the cellar of the AFC West with an abysmal 4-9-1 record, including a coaching change midway through the season where Jerry Smith replaced Lou Saban. But at least on this day during that 1971 season, October 17th, Anderson was able to give Bronco fans something to smile about. Something that the fans hadn't had too many chances to do over the last year. And it wasn't just pride on the line, or trying to salvage a season on the line. For Bobby Anderson, it meant way more than that. It, quite literally, meant his paycheck. Talk about putting your money where your mouth is. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe.
as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.